we're about ready to go. Good morning, everybody. And I bid you welcome on this, the 14th day of the third month, to this service where we celebrate God's word and God's presence in our midst. Je vous souhaite la bienvenue de tous les gens qui nous joignent de tout coin du monde. Et welcome to all the people from Deutschland and from all the Reich Deutsches. And from the Netherlands, welcome. Welcome in this church. Welcome in this church. Welcome in this church. Welcome in this church. And welcome in this church. And the Port Walthy United Church and the Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Once again, we bid you welcome with the myriad of languages God has given us to celebrate God's presence. Therefore, the bulletin will come up before you, and we ask you to join with us as we call each other and call the world to God in prayer. Let us join in the call to worship. Christ is the light of God, light from light. The light shines in the Torah. The light is heard through the prophets. The light is incarnate in Jesus of Nazareth. The light has come, and evil cannot extinguish it. People of the light, let us worship God. in the prayer of approach. Creative God, renovating and rejuvenating humanity, grant us the imagination we need to envision a world redeemed by love, revealed to us through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to sing to you in these words. Please join in the prayer of confession. God of forgiveness and hope, hear the prayers, both silent and spoken, that flow from your people in worship. Lift from us the burdens we bear, heal all that is hurtful, free us from fear, and clear the clouds that hide you from us and us from you. Into your hands we commend our spirits, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm convinced that God is a loving God who is not so interested in our past as they are interested in our present and in our future. And so I believe 
that not heights or depths, nor present things, nor future things, nor angels, nor rulers can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. May it be so. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Numbers, chapter 21. The Israelites marched from Mount Hor on the Red Sea Road around the land of Edom. The people became impatient on the road. The people spoke against God and Moses. Why did you bring us up from Egypt to kill us in the desert where there is no food or water? And we detest this miserable bread. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people, and they bit the people. Many of the Israelites died. The people went to Moses and said, We've sinned, for we spoke against the Lord and you. Pray to the Lord so that he will send the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous snake and place it on a pole. Whoever is bitten can look at it and live. Moses made a bronze snake and placed it on a pole. If a snake bit someone, that person could look at the bronze snake and live. Here ends the reading. Will you join us for the psalm? Please stand as able. give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, and the love of our God endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell others their story. ancestors cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and God delivered them from their distress. They gave thanks to the Lord for unfailing love, and thanked God for wonderful unmerited deeds. God satisfied their thirst, and filled the hungry with good things. praise God in the assembly of the people. Let us praise God in the council of the elders, for God lifts the needy out of their affliction. righteous see God's merciful hand and rejoice, while the jaws of the wicked hang open in awe. Let the one who is wise take heed of these things, and let all ponder the loving deeds of God. With offerings of thanks, let us come before God, and tell of God's works with our songs. 
glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Thank you. Please be seated for the lesson. <coughs> the second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2. At one time, you were like a dead person because of the things you did wrong and your offenses against God. You used to act like most people in our world do. You followed the rule of a destructive spiritual power. This is the spirit of disobedience to God's will that is now at work in persons whose lives are characterized by disobedience. At one time, you were like those persons. All of you used to do whatever felt good and whatever you thought you wanted so that you were children headed for punishment just like everyone else. However, God is rich in mercy. He brought us to life with Christ while we were dead as a result of those things that we did wrong. He did this because of the great love that he has for us. You are saved by God's grace. And God raised us up and seated us in the heavens with Christ Jesus. God did this to show future generations the greatness of his grace by the goodness that God has shown us in Christ Jesus. You are saved by God's grace because of your faith. This salvation is God's gift. It's not something you possessed. It's not something you did that you can be proud of. Instead, we are God's accomplishment, created in Christ Jesus to do good things. God planned for these good things to be the way that we live our lives. Here ends the reading. Will you please stand as able for the gospel? The gospel comes to us from the gospel according to John chapter 3. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish but have eternal life. God sent, didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him isn't judged. Whoever doesn't believe in him is already judged because they don't believe in the name of God's only son. This is the basis for judgment. The light came into the world and people loved darkness more than the light for their actions are evil. All who do wicked things hate the light and don't come to the light for fear that their actions will be exposed to the light. Whoever does the truth comes to the light so that it can be seen that their actions were done in God. The Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. Okay, so I have the time to be with the younger people today. And I need your wisdom, how you've learned things throughout the years. And if I hold up this before you, hopefully you will see something. I think the camera is live, so you're picking it up. You should see A, B. So if I stare at that, you should be saying A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Continue on. But there's a different ending, depending where you are. In Canada, we end with Z. In the United States, we end with Z. If you travel to England, it's Z. If you travel to Holland, Z. Z. If you travel in a variety of language, it's usually Z. But some places they say Z. So there's always a little bit difference in the alphabet. You see underneath that two other letters. Those are the beginning of the Greek alphabet, because not every alphabet is the same. And they go alpha, beta. Some of you might remember beta as a form of programming. And it goes on, and it ends with the letter omega. You see, the last two letters at the very bottom of the page are from the Hebrew alphabet, and they read this way. And it goes Aleph, Bet, and it continues on. Alphabets are different no matter where you travel in the world. And sometimes they're pronounced differently, and sometimes we see things differently. The Greek alphabet goes from Alpha to Omega. And God says that's all the alphabet, from the Alpha to the Omega, because that was the language that Jesus' writings were recorded in. In one of those languages, in the Greek language, there's this strange letter called pi. 
You'll see it written there at the bottom, pi. And that's in the middle of the alphabet. And it's one of those letters we don't often talk about because it's in the middle of things, but it's very, very important in the pronouncing of all words. Pi is an awful lot of Greek words. And pi has special significance. Usually when we think of pi in English, we think of a round thing that's got a crust on the bottom and a crust on the top maybe, and is filled with great things to eat. Pi, in the middle of everything. Now, why is today called Pi Day? Well, pi is sometimes thought of as being 3.14. Pi, 3 being March, 14, today is the 14th of March. So today is Pi Day, 3.14. And Pi Day, we don't think of a tart, a round piece of pie that we would eat, and we don't obviously think of the letter Pi. Pi is the word P-I-E, which means public, intentional, and explicit. And today is the day we celebrate everything that's between A and Z. We celebrate all the letters of the alphabet. We celebrate all of God's people, the rainbow, the plethora of God's people, and all the uniqueness that are there, and how each one of us is a letter in that whole alphabet, and how we're very important in God's eyes. God says from the beginning to the end, that is me. I am with everybody, all the letters of the alphabet. So today is the day to be public, explicit, intentional, and explicit, P-I-E, public, intentional, and explicit. To be public about God's love and how God's love to, extends to all people. Especially today we're remembering those who have different sexualities, different gender expressions, different ways of living. We're remembering all those people and how they are part of God's alphabet. And interesting and important if we go to spell anything about God, we have to have all those people together. Public. And today we're saying that publicly. That everybody knows they have a part in God's kingdom. We're intentional. We're just not saying, oh, well, it's a day and we'll let it go past. No, we're intentional about celebrating it and reminding people that as you are, you are part of God's family and God loves the uniqueness that is you. And we are explicit. Yes, we are publicly saying that we support people who are important in God's life, like gay people, like lesbian people, like transgender people, like queer people, like bisexual people, like darker skinned, Lighter skinned, taller, shorter, fatter, skinnier. We celebrate all of God's people because that is an important part of what makes up the whole people of God. But now, I have another thing for you to think about. A lot of people don't realize that there are other pies. And if I hold this up before you, people of a certain generation might know that that is also pie. If you don't, I want you to find out, because part of Pi Day is exploring. So 22 over 7 is another Pi Day, the 22nd of July. I'll let you think that through. Go exploring, as God goes exploring, and God loves all that God finds. Let us pray. In peace, dear God, I come to you through Jesus Christ, who makes me new. And while I run, or play, or rest, be with those whom I love best. Guide me in your holy way as you walk with me each day. Amen. And now we'll stand and sing to God's praise the hymn 288 in Voices United, Great is Thy Faithfulness, 288.
Let us pray. May the words in my mouth and the meditations in all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Did you know that the verb to believe appears more frequently in John's Gospel than in any other New Testament writing? And did you know that the noun faith does not appear at all in John's Gospel? What is John trying to get at here? Why is believing so much important, more important than faith? Faith is all about having the right answers. Belief is all about doing the right things. And John's Gospel is all about belief. It's all about action. It's all about remembering what God has done, the actions God has taken, and God is taking, that saves us and that brings about our spiritual, emotional, and physical help. And it calls us and motivates us to be involved in similar actions. That's what God's, or John's Gospel is all about, making us become the living body of Christ. Thus, this passage starts off by remembering previous actions that God has done, actions that saved the people. It starts off with a reference to the book of Numbers that Tamson read for us this morning, where the Israelites defied God and were bitten by snakes. God commands Moses then to make a bronze snake and put it upon a staff and hold it up high above the people so that whosoever looks upon it will be healed. This coiled snake around a staff is still the symbol for medicine in our world today. By this, people are healed. In remembering God's actions in the past, we are saved in the present. The greatest action God has is to love. And John's Gospel makes this very explicit. The greatest action of God is God loving. John introduces the concept that God loves the entire cosmos, not just the Jews, and not just the people who are good, and not just the people that like God, and not just the people that are righteous. God's love extends to all people, regardless of who they are, for all people are seen as being the children of God. The words in Greek read that God emptied himself of all self-concern and of all self-centeredness. God abdicated all the trappings of God, and God took action and poured himself into creation. The Greek words, that God, the Greek words read that God so loved the cosmos that God entered into it. Not just stayed apart from it, not just observed it, but God entered into the creation, into, cos into the cosmos. And it's our duty to see God and God's presence in the world around us and to make mention of that. For those of you who have children, you often see traces of yourself in them. And if you don't see them, trust me, we who observe your children see traces of their parents in them, their looks, their words, and their stances. So in creation, we see traces of God, of how God has embodied God's self in creation and loves creation and is in creation. God says that when this is lifted up, when we make mention of this, and when we draw people's attention to this, then we experience enlightenment, and then we are truly saved. We're on the road home. Just as the snake on the staff was lifted up, so when we lift up the presence of God in our conversation with people around us, that people are saved and we ourselves experience salvation by entering into a deeper level of thought and communion with people. Paul Shoup is an American theologian and he wrote that it is possible to read the entire body of scripture from creation to the end as a story of God's love for the entire cosmos. Individual acts that each of us have experienced become the chapters that we remember just as the snake on a staff is a chapter in the gospel today. And we gather these chapters that are your chapters that speak to you together and they become the book of our salvation that reaches its zenith in Jesus Christ and then has the chapter that's all about the saints afterwards and finally involves us in the unfolding drama of salvation. And it is all summarized in the words, God so loved the world. All these acts of love, all these acts of birthing life, and all these acts of redemption are symbolized in the words, God so loved the world. And in so loving the world, God loves you. And you are important in the alphabet of God's life. Without you, there is something missing. That's how important you are in God's cosmos. For John, the supreme act of God's love 
was God himself entering into creation, of daring to love those people who are forgotten, those people who are outside the normal quotes, those people who are pronounced differently, Z or Z. God so loved all creation. John described Jesus Christ in the, with the Greek word monogene, mono being one, gene being engendered or begotten. Jesus Christ was the one supreme act of God's love in John's gospel, because in him, the Christ of God, the incarnation, the outpouring of God, the physical presence of God was dwelling. Including into this, into the drama of salvation, into the reality of God's love extending to all in creation and extending to all creation even beyond humanity, there is a form of life that comes, of consciousness, of awakening to our part in the universe. So John has, John has those wonderful lines, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him all the cosmos, all the world might be saved. Not just humanity, but all the cosmos. And thus we must live with respect in creation. And thus we must do our work for the environment. And thus we must become active. We must become doers of salvation and not just the bearers of the story. A profound sense of God loving creation is heard in the words when God was done creating the world, according to Genesis, when God looked at all the creation and said, it is good, it is very good. And with that consciousness, John's community was born to take creation and make it good, very good, to do our part in God's work. In John's community, as it was being born, they were physically being born again from one way of consciousness to a completely other way of consciousness, from static religion that followed rules and regulations into a religion that was full of action, full of love, full of caring. They were born from people who interpreted everything so terribly literally to people who understood the spirit of the law and the spirituality about what God was about. Of people, they were born from people using creation, exploiting creation, to people who started to see themselves as guardians of creation and loving and tending God's garden of life. The world in its entirety is the object of God's love in John's gospel. And this was seen as the constitutional foundation for the church that John's community was gathering to form, the ecclesia, the body of God's people, to love as God has loved. In the epistles, that John writes after the gospel, the three letters written by John, John writes, God is love, and all who abide in love abide in God, and God in them. He who does not love does not know God. It does not say that he who does not love is not loved by God. Essential. In John's community, no one is condemned. No one is outside the alphabet. All are a part of God's creation. This understanding was, and still must be, the driving principle behind our reason for being as a community of faith, as an assembly, as an ecclesia, as a church. Mother Teresa, many of you will remember her, never asked any of the street urchins in Calcutta if they were Hindu, Muslim, or Christian, or anything, before she would help them. They were, and she saw them all, simply as God's children, equally, especially, and uniquely loved by God, and so should they be loved by her community. If the Christian church only serves itself, only exists for itself, or makes no dis makes, starts to make distinctions before help is offered to anyone, then it is not the church, it is not the living body of Christ, it is only a sect, equally as damning and damaging as suicide cults from times past. If we are exclusive in any form, we are not the church. If we say that our alphabet is only A, B, then we are not the church. And no matter how we restate the alphabet, if we do not include the whole alphabet, then we are not the alphabet. We are simply portions of letters. The mark of the church is always inclusivity, and the true mark of the church is inclusive love. Now, loving and including everybody in our love does not mean that we all have to agree upon everything before we can sit together at table. It doesn't mean that we have to do everything the same way. There's the difference between A and E and I and O and U. They're all vowels, yes, but they're all different and they all have different functions. So each church community should have different functions, different ways of expressing, different ways of sounding. Some are really strange. 
If I were to say things to you like the click sounds are strange to you, but they're still part of the alphabet of God's language. Being inclusive doesn't mean that we have to do everything the same. Being inclusive doesn't mean that we have to see all world situations through the same lens. It does mean, however, that we have to see in each other a child of God, a child of God's creation, a child of God's love, and have respect for that child, just as God has respect for that child. It can be very hard to love, to love when people explicitly hate you because you are not part of their conception of the alphabet or because you belong to a different alphabet. It can be very hard to love when people say all manner of evil against you and call you names that cut you to the very core. It can be very hard to love when people explicitly condemn you and out you and point to you as being different. It can be very hard to love when people revile you and turn their back on you and walk away from you. It can be very hard to love when systems persecute you because of the color of your skin or because of your ethnic background, because of your religious background, or because you are just you. And it can so, be so easy to fall into this system of revenge and spite and hatred and claiming an eye for an eye. Remember, an eye for an eye renders everybody blind. Tit for tat is a low-hanging fruit that is easily picked when anger seizes a person. And it is a possession of evil. And evil possesses you in doing that. Christ calls us to love even those who hate. The Pope of the Coptic Church in Egypt, yes, the Pope, not the Pope in Rome, but the Pope in Alexandria, whenever 13 of his people were murdered by Islamic extremists, walked into church that Sunday and prayed for the extremists. He said, we can never descend into hatred. We must always live in love and forgiveness. That was hard to do, but that was a true embodiment of Christian faith and Christian expression. Christ calls us to love. We start loving by realizing that this is what God does. God has no favorites. God pours out God's love on the good, the bad, the young, the old, the ugly, and the beautiful. God pours out God's love on all creation. So we move from the extract to the concrete. We start by feeding people, by loving people, by caring for people as an example. And all these anonymous people that we gather up food for on Wednesday, we don't know who they are, but we do it because we love. And then suddenly we move from these anonymous people to actually meeting a person and seeing that, yes, they might have fallen on hard times, yes, they may be this, but inside there's something wonderful and kind and interesting, something you want to get to know. And then we move from an actual person that we're trying to get to know to a person with a name, with a story, with a personality. And then we move from just this person to all of a sudden becoming friends with this person and seeing in them somebody we delight to see again, seeing them as a child of God with value, uniqueness. And then we move to love because we think of them when they are not there. And that's a sign of loving, when we think of them and see them when they're not there. The church is the catalyst for this action in the world. It must itself be the source and cause of this action at all times, the action that helps recreate the world and redeem the world. For John, this is all about action. Christianity is a verb and not a noun. Christianity is action and not proper belief. Christianity is being out there and loving and redeeming and restoring, not by saying, well, when you're like us, you can join us. If we lift this up, if we lift the action of God up and make it our priority, then the nations will be healed. And the nations, not different countries, but the people of the world will be healed. And God will smile. For God's extraordinary love for the world will become incarnate again. And then God's alphabet will grow beyond being A, B, until we finally go from A to Z, from Alpha to Omega. In that, all the world is present. So whatever letter you might be, in this wide spectrum, today is the day we remember Pi, when we gather all of God's children together and realize all the alphabet beyond Pi is God's alphabet and loved by God. 
it is our duty to take action to make this so. For God so loved the world. Let us pray. Almighty God, who loves even us, help us to love those whom you call your children. All the world. And into your hands we give them as we give ourselves for your glory. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you stand and make with me a statement of faith? It's published in our bulletin. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated wherever you are. Let us think about what offering we will make to God as the choir leads us in their offering this morning. Moses raised the serpent up, so must also be lifted up. Our Jesus ever will be lived, in Him may live eternally. As the choir has made their offering to God, let us in turn make our offerings of God. Let us think what we would give to God this day. Let us now pass that to God. Let us pray. Receive the offerings of our voices and our lives. Employ both for your glory and the good of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our prayers this morning, let us think of those people who are not usually included in the alphabet of God's soup. 
Let us think of those people who are far away, who come to our mind this morning. Let us think of those people who are maybe in death, but who come back to join us in worship this morning. Let us think of those people who are making our life richer by their presence, who are adding color and flavor to our existence. Let us think of those people that are way out there in our own estimation and see that they're still within the embrace of God's circle. Let us receive them as God's offering to us. Beloved of God, let us pray. Great and mysterious God, you haunt the whole universe. All creation is loved by you. And when we open our eyes, we behold your presence in a myriad of different forms, in a myriad of different places, always surprising, always wonderful, and always challenging. We thank you that you have not given up on us, that in spite of our actions or inactions, you still love us, and you still challenge us, and you still call us your children, and you still want us to engage the world, and you still give us strength to engage the world. We give you thanks for love that is faithful, love that is constant, and love that is true and will never stop. Help us to be inspired by that love and turn to your creation with that love and love creation, love the cosmos, as you love the cosmos. We give you thanks for the world around us, for the people around us, for the challenges that are before us. We give you thanks that life is a challenge and we are up to that challenge because we are with you. Oh, we might not accomplish all that you call us to do. We might not accomplish all that we want to do. But what we do is good in your sight and loved by you. Therefore, help us to pick up the tasks at hand and to be your living presence in this world. Help us to open the doors to those who are in prison, not only behind bars of steel, but behind bars of public opinion. Help us this day to write the alphabet in different languages that includes all people with different expressions and different ideas. Help us to remember those that are really strange to us and to see still your presence with them and in them. We give you thanks this day for this congregation of people gathered electronically, some of whom we know, some of whom we don't know, but we are surprised that we are all God's children. We give you thanks for the people that are forgotten, those people who keep the cogs of our society moving. Garbage men, garbage collectors, police people, firefighters, we give you thanks for them. We give you thanks for engineers who imagine ways to be different. We give you thanks for children that pull us out of our intellectual world back to the world of sticky hands, and loving kisses. We give you thanks for old people who never impose their opinion upon us, but who are a great source of wisdom and understanding. We give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who opened to us the doors of heaven and showed us a better world. Eternal God, we forget many in our prayers, we know that. But we give you thanks that you forget none of your children. You don't even forget us. Therefore, now, with you in mind, we turn to you with thanksgiving, with supplication, and with praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our hymn is Draw the Circle Wide. It is found in more voices at number 145. Draw the Circle Wide.
We are reminded that the light of Christ is not in candles nor institutions, but in each of us. Let us be the light of the world. Let us be the fire starters in the engine of the kingdom of heaven. And so I invite you to extinguish your candles as we do right now. Will you join me in the benediction as printed for us in our bulletin? May the blessing of the Maker be yours. And circling us, above us and within us. May the blessing of the Son be yours. The wine and the water, the bread and the stories, to feed us and remind us. May the blessing of the Spirit be yours. The wind and the fire, the still small voice of calm, to comfort us and disturb us. And may the blessings of God three in one and one in three be yours this day and every day. To protect, to protect us, us defend, defend us, encourage us, us, and strengthen us. And may we bless each other. A blessing rooted in our common pilgrimage, the blessing of a friend. Stand up wherever you are. Turn to the people around the table. Turn to the people that come to your mind. Turn to somebody's pictures you see and say, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Having all of God's people together now in the peace of Christ, let us join in our choral prayer to conclude our worship. Thus our worship and adoration of God, sent, God ends. May God bless you in this week ahead. Remember to include all the letters of your alphabet for God's glory and for your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now we will have the announcements for the church community. So those of you who would like to stay for the announcements, they will be included in our recording for this Sunday. The announcements for the church community will be flashed up before you in your bulletin. It's there now. I'd like to draw your attention to a few things. This is the week ahead. Today is Pi Day. Look at those people who are different in your life and see how God is in them and has brought them to you to challenge you, to help you grow. They are God's love to you. 
So today I'll joy, remember the sesh, remind the session members that we have a meeting at noon to look at some of the future and how we're going to celebrate Easter in this time of COVID. Monday in the evening is the affirming group. I don't know if Tamsin wants to say anything to you about that, but it's an ongoing thing about LGBTQ plus community. Tamsin. Yes, uh, Monday night, we are having another session of Why Do You Folks Get a Parade, the uh, Affirming Education Series. Um, and this is a special session because I won't be doing the presentation. My friend Vi Jones will be telling us about two-spirit identities, which is a, an identity specific to indigenous people. So we'll be getting a bit of cross-cultural understanding as well as um, affirming understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Tamsin. Uh, Tuesday evening is Blake's Discussion Group, another lively group of people getting together and discussing Christian faith in the context of the present world. Wednesday morning is the devotional time. It'll be up on Facebook always before 10 o'clock in the morning. Then at noon on Wednesday, Paul will be here to receive our offerings that we can take to the food bank. A truckload of food goes from here every Wednesday to the various food banks around the city. This week's bargain of the week is no frills, 15 pounds of potatoes, a weird number because they're not all the properly shaped potatoes, but 15 pounds for 288. Then Tuesday, Wednesday evening, 6 o'clock, you can join us for the in-depth Bible study, a look at the scriptures that were read today, but in an in-depth light. Thursday morning is our coffee break. If you'd like to sit and have a cup of coffee with some friends and catch up on some of the news, great opportunity to do that. 7.30 in the evening, Adam and the choir gathers together, as they've gathered together this morning, to practice and lead us in worship. Then Saturday evening, we post on our Facebook the Bible study discussion for the next week. So late at night on Saturday, that will come up during Lent. Sunday morning, next Sunday morning is worship at 10 o'clock, and communion will be at next Sunday's worship as well. So please have some bread and a little bit of juice as we gather in God's presence around God's table. The next Sunday night, the stewards will have their meeting to discuss how we're doing financially, are we able to keep things afloat. In that light, I'd like to thank everybody for their kind donations to the church throughout the year. Not only donations of money, but donations of time, of caring, of prayer, and just of love to God's people. The 40-day Lenten, Pro Lenten project is something like the Christmas Advent project, where we gather things together. So maybe you should be entering into that. Something you do every day to make God's world better. We sent out Valentine cards, which are greatly received by people, and we're also planning to send out Easter cards. So if you'd like to take an Easter card and just write a note just from your church family thinking about you, bring them to the church. We'll put labels or addresses on them and send them out to people who are shut in who might not have a Zoom connection, but this will be their connection to the church. So if you'd like to do that, it's a great way of reaching out. I think at uh, Valentine's Day, we had over 80 letters, little cards, go out from the church. So the same thing if we could do that at Easter. It really means an awful lot to people who are shut in and to receive them, to know that the church community is caring for them. We're looking at the Easter Holy Week services. There will be a service which will be broadcast on Zoom on Holy Thursday evening, Monday Thursday evening. There will be another service broadcast Good Friday evening at 7 o'clock, and then Easter Sunday morning. We will gather together for worship once again. The ecumenical service this year is going to be a recording of the ministers of the area talking about various Easter and what events and what Easter means to them and how we relate to such questions as, why did Christ die? So hear us talk for a few minutes, the clergy of the area, around the topic of Good Friday. If you wish to get e-news, please send the church your email address and then we can knock a letter out to you. Once again, if you're isolated, please call the church and we'll see what we can do to help you through this period of darkness and isolation. You see the prayer circle is mentioned there. In addition to that, last night the mother of Lisa Moore died. So if you'll remember Lisa and David in your prayers, that'd be greatly appreciated. As Lisa's mom, they were up to see her and she died after they got home. So please keep Lisa in your prayers. If you're interested in confirmation class, we're gradually getting the material together. It will come out in podcasts. You'll get a written story, written program to follow, sent to you. And then we'll gather once a week. We're looking probably at Thursday at 6 o'clock. Let us know if that's a good time for you, where we can gather for 45 minutes to discuss what the lesson was for that week. It will begin the week before Holy Week, 
and will continue from then on to Pentecost, which is the long weekend in May. So if you'd like to join in that, some interesting discussion like, is there a God? How do we know? That starts us off on our confirmation journey. The offerings, various ways of making the offerings are there. Thank you for all those who are on par to keep that continuous offering in because that takes an awful lot of pressure off the stewards to know that they've got this kind of money resource coming in. The North Start with Outreach Centre message is there. And at all times, wear your mask, wash your hands, be conscious and loving of others, and get your jab as quickly as you can. People need that, and hopefully if we get enough people, well, we will get enough people, because I know you are going to encourage your friends to do the same thing. And by the end of the summer, we should be back to some sort of new normal. These are the announcements for the church community. Maybe there are others who like to make announcements now. We'll go to an open chat time. Cheryl, I'm going to depend upon you to talk about people and bring them forth for conversation to the community. If you'd like to, t to talk, please raise your hand and we'll go from there. Stop the recording.